undeniable acquaintance with Flemish art. X-rays established Duno Gonsalves made significant alterations to the original underdrawings of Joanny Inej, as demonstrated with these wing panels of the Braganza family. The magnificent retable completed in the 1470s paid a special tribute to the Portuguese royals and aristocratic knights who participated valiantly in the Moroccan campaigns from 1415 until 1471. Every scholar has a varying polemic regarding the identification of the portraits, and I'm no exception. Today, um, I began my lecture with the 1415 campaign of King Joao I de Suta. Key to the identification of his portrait in the St. Vincent altarpiece is the fact that he was buried at Battaglia Abbey in the habit of a Carthusian monk. The ruler kneels in front of his son, who died at Fez in 1443 a bearded Santo Infant Fernando. Prince Enrique is designated based upon correspondence with his tomb effigy at Patalia. The panel of the relics provides the portrait of Prince Pedro in scarlet holding a fragment of St. Anthony of Padua's cranium which he bought back from his travels in Italy. Like the fourth Pristrana tapestry of the taking of Tangier, high stature is accorded to the cadet house of Braganza in the St. Vincent altarpiece. The panel of the fisherman magnifies Alfonso, Juan I's illegitimate son and powerful patriarch of the dynastic house. The panel of the knights includes Juan de Braganza, the Marquis of Montemar, who led Portuguese troops to Tangier in 1471. Insofar as the larger panels, one contains the centerpiece figure of St. Tecla, who cut her hair to follow St. Paul, she baptized early Christians as a deacon. X-rays confirm a diadem once adorned the head of the female saint whose feast day of October 27th coincided with the 1458 victory at Alcazar Kassir. In the immediate foreground is Princess Joanna, daughter of Juan V, who served as regent for the realm in 1471 when her father and brother were in Morocco. Joanna subsequently became a Franciscan poor Claire at Aviero. Behind her is Princess Isabel, daughter of King Juan I and the Duchess of Burgundy. Her likeness resembles a portrait in the Getty Museum painted by Roger van der Weyden before she left the court in Brussels to live in a convent of the poor Claire at Mons as a Franciscan tertiary. Opposite Isabel is her brother King Duarte, whose chiseled features approximate his suggested portraits by Jan van Eyck. In front of him are two nephews of Alfonso V. Now, Prince Juan in the foreground during the Moroccan campaigns of 1471 was the constable of Portugal and head of the Order of Christ and the Order of Santiago. The second large panel with the center effigy of the martyr St. Vincent of Saragossa pays a special tribute to the heroes of Alcazar of Cassir, Asilla, and Tangier. All the figures are portrayed in armor in a Lajos-like ceremonial kissing of the hands of St. Vincent. Opposite King Juan V and Prince Juan is the monarch's beloved brother, Prince Fernando, who unsuccessfully had attempted to take Tangier several times in January of 1464. Behind the royals are two aristocrats holding glaives, and both died as Lusitanian martyrs in Morocco. Alvarez de Ca Alvaro de Castro, the Count of Monsanto, was killed at the gate of the Alcazar at Asilla, defending his sovereign Alfonso V. Now, Duarte de Menenzas, whose father Pedro had been the first governor of Ceuta, fought in the ill-fated expedition to Tangier in 1437, and in 1444 was elevated to the high office of the realm standard bearer. Menenzes became the first captain and governor of Qasar al Qasir following the taking of the town in October 23rd, 24th of 1458. Menenzes was killed in the hills of Minakofu on January 20th, 1464, sacrificing himself so that Alfonso V could slip away from a, a Moroccan ambush. His portrait in the St. Vincent altarpiece has been identified based upon the armor depicted on his tomb which ironically holds only a tooth he gave to his wife, Isabel, before departing for battle. Menendez's death, Menendez's death occurred near the January 22nd feast day of St. Vincent, and if Prince Juan, 
the second, who was called the perfect prince by posterity, the valorous nobleman Menenzas assuredly was deemed the perfect knight. But to conclude, from the 1415 Portuguese conquest of Ceuta, memorialized in Ghent by the diplomat painter Jan van Eyck, to the 1471 taking of Tangier, commemorated in the tapestries of Tournai and the St. Vincent altarpiece. Uh, this lecture has attempted to address chivalric portraits of gallant paladins in the North African contest of arms, the courtly display of martial excellence, power and prestige, and the glory of a contemporary epic. Now, the tapestries and St. Vincent altarpiece were created on the threshold of an epic of exploration by the Portuguese explorers, whose navigational skills after the conquest of Morocco ushered in a change to the medieval world picture. Now, I, uh, I hope someone asked the question, how did the darn tapestries get to Spain? Because I can go into that. Uh, but that's the end of, of my lecture as I have it. But I'll be happy to explain how they got to Pastrana. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, they, they did. They, they actually sent out uh, scouts uh, that uh, disguised themselves and went in. Well, the Portuguese didn't expect resistance. Uh, they were surprised, shocked in 1437. They were taken, but the big mistake in 1437 was they divided their troops. Or they, half the army went to ships and the other half went Troops, but they had scouted out that coastland. I actually, I actually believe John Van Eyck also had traveled to Ceuta uh, back in 1428-29. The Portuguese had knowledge of the coastline. What they didn't have a knowledge of was the mustering uh, in 1437 that uh, all of the troops were being mustered by Lazarique, a uh, hundred thousand. Then uh, that's what overwhelmed. Them. But they would send out scouts well in advance to sketch the coastline and to sketch the, uh, the ports. So they knew the ports. Uh, but still, uh, they arrived in full armor in 1471 as a, a show of force. And uh, it took months to prepare that armor. Uh, in fact, in 1437, uh, the entire town of Porto did without cattle. They ate the intestines of animals so that the cattle would be used to provide uh, food for the troops. And there was a great deal of preparation in Portugal before each of these ventures. Good question. But they did scout out the land. Actually, the, the, there is confusion because in the catalog it says the Wheel of St. Catherine. Now, the Wheel of St. Catherine was the device of, it was one of the devices of King Duarte. Uh, but when you blow up the emblem or when you see the tapestries in person, because prior to the, these exhibitions, the only pictures of the tapestries were black and white photographs in Reynaldo dos Santos's uh, uh, book of six, of, uh, 1926. That was it. And so uh, one can understand why the wheel of Catherine might be mistaken. But the, where, where the mention of the device occurs in Garcia de Descendo's chronicle of Joan II. That's where the, the device is mentioned. And the woman who, yeah, I'm not the, uh, even though I've drawn attention to it, there was a British woman named uh, Anne Sasso. And uh, she wrote a number of books in English on different uh, mysteries about Portugal, on the Cape Navigator, and, and uh, she also drew attention to the Atlantic. I drew attention to the word Janet. Uh huh. If you go into the um, uh, the show on the very first panel of the landing, and you look at the 
kingship, you're going to see the word jame. Only, it's not spelled with a J, it's spelled with an I. I, A, N, A, I, S. Because the old, uh, the old, uh, just like in old Spanish, you'll get the D and V interposed, the I and the J. Look for it, you'll see it. Uh, it's not on every envelope, but it's on a few of them. Everybody took a, a motif. You know, I'd like to, to say I could give you a positive answer on that one. Uh, very often, women took uh, a wattle fence, a fence enclosure as their emblem. Um, it, it's like the, um, the, the three princes that I mentioned at the very beginning of this. Uh, Prince Pedro took as his motto, desire. So that could mean anything. He was married uh, to Isabel of Aragon. Uh, but he took it because it was a statement of his championship of court women. And um, I know that uh, uh, Enrique uh, uh, took as his motto uh, the talent of doing things well. Uh, and uh, what the hardest motto that I found in looking up was Duarte, who took as his motto, I'll take in water for you. And that's a Portuguese na uh, nautical term. And that really means I'll do everything I can for you. Okay. So that uh, when it comes down to that old water wheel, I can say that in the catalog it's identified as a 